Hello there folks and welcome to the studio for another watercolour <coughs> demonstration. Live on YouTube, we are live, so you never know what's going to happen in a live broadcast. You never know. But we're all set up for doing a bit of watercolour painting. It's going to be a relatively quick, speedy demonstration today folks. It's warm in the studio. You can see we've decorated the studio with paintings from around the world. We've got Rome over here. Is that going to stay or is it going to fall? Stay there. We've got San Francisco, we've got an uh, English beach, we've got some Mediterranean stuff and we've got a, a beautiful seascape as well. So um, thanks for taking a bit of time out to join me today for a, a live demo and it's, it's going to be a mountainscape. What I'll say to you is this, I don't know what I'm going to paint until I paint it. So as far as materials are concerned, it's very much going to be a spontaneous kind of demo um, and we'll just kind of see how the painting goes what I've done what I've done is I've 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 got my normal palette here my standard palette of colors okay so what we've got here is this range of paints called Matthew Palmer's natural range and we'll talk about the colors as we go through and I'll say this off the bat all the colors are available uh, to purchase from Watercolor TV. So if you like any of the colours, if you like any of the colours, any of the paints, any of the brushes, then you can get hold of them very, very simply. Basically, you can't go wrong. A few shout outs before we start. Um, already got some super chats coming in. Thank you so much. A big shout out to Angela Guest. Angela Guest. Um, Angela has donated a £5 uh, super chat. Thank you already. You're brilliant. Amazing. Thank you to you, Angela. Also, a big shout out to Alison Miroff, who has uh, popped a uh, super chat uh, donation of £9.99. Very generous. Every penny goes back into the running of this live watercolour world that we've got here. Thank you. It keeps us afloat. And Lynn Fletcher... Lynn Fletcher, a £4.99 super chat. So to the three of you, um, a huge, huge shout out to you. Thank you, you're very generous. Um, and you're not at all tight artist. So thank you so much, you're very, very kind. Also to Roger Cleaver. Roger Cleaver has popped a donation of £3.99. Very kind, again. Thank you so much. Big shout out to all of you for the super chat. And it just, it keeps the paint flowing, it really does. So, what have we got then? So, let's have a little skim over materials. We'll talk a little bit about them, a little bit about materials, okay? Like I said, we've got the natural range of colours, which is my own design of paints. My own design of paints, okay? So, we've got these 14 colours in the natural range. We'll talk about them as we progress. Brushes, I'm going to be using some standard brushes, some special brushes. When I say special brushes, I mean the likes of these bad boys. Here, we've got some Matthew Palmer range of brushes. This one, beautiful branching detail brush. That's gonna creep in later. The gorgeous tree and texture brushes. We've got a lift out brush. Again, everything that you see is available on the website. You can just see, sort of, if I can kind of point at it, just here somewhere. And I've got some new brushes to talk about as well, which are being developed as we speak. So I've squirted all the colours into the palette and I'll mention them as I use them. I think that's the best uh, way to work here today. That is definitely the best way of working. Cynthia, Cynthia Vicker. Wonderful, thank you for the $5 super chat. Cynthia Vicker, you're a star. It's amazing when people do this. It just helps things, helps the paint flow in. Uh, Ray Russo, Ray Russo, thank you to you for the uh, £4.99 super chat as well. Big shout out to you there, Ray, and of course to Cynthia. And Irene Style for a four ninety nine super chat. What is super chat? It's donating to this free world of YouTube. That's what super chat is. It's basically keeping the paint flow in. It, it, helps all the costs of live streaming all the equipment that we have that's what it's for basically more shout outs diane swain diane swain diane swain uh, five pound super chat thank you to you as well so big shout out to diane swain big shout out to irene style ray russo cynthia vicker and let's get close in to the actual 
picture. We are live, so no editing as such. We'll be cutting between the four cameras, but we'll be getting close in. That's the picture. Don't know what we're gonna paint just yet. Um, and here we are. The focus will sort itself out as we go through. So please don't worry about any of that stuff. Pop that just here. And we're gonna start painting. We're gonna mix up a few colors. We're gonna wet the paper. We're gonna paint some mountains. And we've got some new brushes coming out, folks. I'm not gonna mention much about what these are because these brushes won't appear until later on in the year. But there's two uh, new brushes coming out later on in 2021. So keep an eye on Watercolor TV for all information about that. So my first job basically is to wet the entire page. Focus will sort itself out once we start painting because at the minute there's nothing to focus on. There it is, I'm back. Um, let's let's wet the paper. Let's wet the paper. Um, basically, just using water here. What paper am, am I using? It's a 300 gram or 140 pound watercolor paper. That's the weight of the paper, not the price. 140 pound, that's pricey. And uh, this is a lovely natural hairbrush. Quite a unique shape, yeah? A teaser, a teaser trailer. That's as much as I'm gonna say. Plenty of water going on. I've stuck it to a board, a piece of wood, which is always important, of course. Make sure it's nicely covered. The whole sheet of paper, the whole piece of paper is covered. Now, first thing I want to do is bring in some, bring in some sky. The only thing I've got in mind is mountains. So very free and spontaneous today. Okay, don't know exactly how this thing's going to shape up until we actually do it. So quick jump down to the palette. Kim is saying. Has she missed episode three of the watercolor show? No, it's not actually been done yet. Um, it's in the pipelines. Watch this space. The next couple of weeks, you'll see the next episode of the watercolor show. I want to take some orange. This one is natural orange. Um, nice natural colors, basically, um, which allow the paint to flow. I'm going to bring some of this in here. A nice clean orange. Work it down here. So this is all going to be a background, basically. There we go. Bring that in. And then what we'll do is we'll grab some violet, some natural violet. Beautiful colour, natural violet. Bring that into play. Right across the top. Cross the brush, blend the colours together. Look how nice that is for blending. It's beautiful. So you're smoothing the colours together to create a bit of an evening or a sunrise. However you think, whatever time of day this is, um, you can decide. Yeah, it's been quite busy um, recently with various things happening. Writing new books, new brushes in the works, but episode three of the watercolour show is due very soon please don't worry this demo here and the demo from last week which was the cottage the cottage garden has kind of filled that little gap hopefully and i'll put some clouds in to the picture now and what i want to do here is i'm going to take some natural gray natural gray now natural gray is the most common of all the colors now this brush is the perfect shape four clouds beautiful tool I'm going to lay the brush flat look at that it makes effortless clouds I'm going to twist it across misty clouds we can go slimmer of course 
wiggle it down. You've seen me do this many a time, this effect, but I want to go um, and blend these in as well. Put some highlights in the clouds as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Twist those in. Beautiful. And then maybe just a little one coming down on this side. Now what I'll do here is I'll pop some smaller ones in as well. Just little sort of misty, misty clouds, just loosely painted in. Nice and clean. That's the sky, that's the clouds. What I'll do now is clean the brush. And I want to squeeze it through the fingers a little bit so the brush goes nice and flat, like a sword almost. And I want to basically blend the base of these clouds into the into the sky. So I'm softening and blending. Basically softening the base away with them. Because that brush it's natural, you can actually angle it and it stays in shape. Can you see? You can get some wacky shapes with that brush. So you can lay the brush flat and you can actually draw it across the page. So imagine the little highlights in the clouds and it just absorbs the colour. The paint's almost dry because it's so warm today. But um, it's just got the right amount of moisture in there that we can actually lift off those colours. A soft, clean, beautiful sky, which is what we're interested in here. Beautiful, liking that. Love the soft colours. And pop some little slim clouds around. Beautiful shape of that. It's a painting round corners, that brush. Nice, happy with that, really loving that. Listen, bottom of your screen, you can see a bit of an advert there, folks. Sunday the 13th of June, paint a panda in a bamboo forest. This is the latest workshop that's coming up. Um, if you've been taking part in the live virtual workshops, the next one that's coming up is Sunday the 13th of um, June. While this is drying off, have a think about booking in, folks. It's a £10 workshop. Very much a step-by-step -step process. Very much a step-by-step -step process. And um, it's basically very much tuition. What we're doing here is quick, spontaneous watercolour. The painting that we're doing on Sunday, the 13th of June, is an animal in watercolour. We've done loads and loads of these um, uh, watercolour workshops. You can see a huge collection of them here. The first 60 live workshops are all here on your screen. You can see giraffes. Uh, you can see uh, puffins, you can see a hedgehog there, beautiful um, way of working. And if you do want to do some watercolour, then there's nothing finer than a virtual watercolour workshop to get the paint flowing. I will break down every little step. If you're interested in booking on the latest one that's coming up, because maybe, maybe you're... Um, watching this at a later stage well just head on over to this website that you can just see here watercolor.tv or there's a link in the description for the video and you'll see how you can book the workshop a 10 pound step-by-step -step virtual watercolor workshop taking you around the world teaching art around the world people love these workshops uh, i'm sure people in the chat i can see people in the chat are saying how much they're enjoying them as well so a great way of learning watercolors and a nice excuse to have a go at getting the paint flowing but the really cool thing about the workshops is, is if you can't watch them live you can watch them at any time again and again because it's yours to keep and it's yours to enjoy once you've bought a workshop you can just have a go um as much as you like here we've painted in this sky. It needs a little bit of time to dry. It's getting there. It's not going to be long today. It's warm. I've not got a hair dryer today. It's too hot for that. We don't want air dryers. Too warm. Too warm. Masking tape. Remove the stickiness from the masking tape. Wipe some of the moisture from the brow. I'm going to pop this fairly low. I want to pop it. 
actually about here now the paper is not quite dry but it's dry enough for what I want what I want to do here is I want to use a size 10 brush a normal size 10 brush with that grey I've just used beautiful pointy brush there make sure that's nicely stuff I want to paint in some distant mountains I want to get character I want to get sharpness I want to have a bit of a nervous shake as I do this clean the brush give it a couple of taps and give it a good old scrub So you've got distance, you've got depth. That's just the starting point. That's just the misty mountains, the out of focus ones, the hazy ones. I've painted mountains many times over the years. There's something nice about painting mountains. We're gonna go stronger, we're gonna go heavier. Next, much, much heavier with the paint at this stage. <coughs> I can see some of you talking about the workshops. Here's a couple of the workshops we've done recently. Uh, live workshops Grand Canyon I loved painting this it was quite it was quite a challenge well done to the people that did this I put every ounce of my teaching ability into that and then at the back here hiding away is Niagara Falls from the American side we've discovered so these were both painted during a live virtual workshop and they were it's very much a step-by-step -step process it's a private world, it's not open to everybody, it's a private little world and it's just something to enjoy, it's something to enjoy and you can see at the bottom there, there's the information Sunday 13th of June 21, paint a stunning panda in a beautiful bamboo forest all you need is three colours, you just want three colours for the virtual workshops you want a yellow, like cadmium yellow or something you want a blue so French ultramarine cobalt blue in this particular case here I'm using natural blue and then you want a red these are what we call primary colors and that's enough to work it's enough to work I'm talking while the picture's drying there's the red so rose madder elizabeth and crimson uh, this one's natural red those three colors and three standard off-the-shelf brushes nothing fancy about the brushes just three brushes a big brush a medium brush and a small brush and for a tenner it's yours to keep but you can watch it live or you can watch it at any time so time differences don't come into this they don't come into it let's go heavier with the colors same brush just heavier with the paint so we've got the rich gray strong gray there it is we've got the orange I want to make the orange heavier much much heavier with the colors and then I also want to creep in some green as well now I've got my own green paint here it's called natural green it's designed to look right greens obviously you know can look false but here we've got um, the definite um, natural colors replicating nature that's what it's all about so I'm gonna paint these a lot darker than what you would imagine and you'll see why and you've seen me do this before but you know something it's better than watching the chase the what the chase What's that then? We'll bring it in with the grey. Nice and juicy. Juicy means the paint is fresh. Look at that fresh, beautiful, vibrant colour. Bring it in. We're talking mountains, so we need to get character. And literally, I want to pick and mix. What I mean by that is I've just dabbed into that orange colour. What's in the palette? I've got the green as well. And I'm just going to sort of work it all in. I want to work it all together. A silhouette of mountains is what we're talking about here. We'll put some detail into these, of course, once I've put them in. Mountains, I've wrote the book on mountains. <laughs> yes, I have. Take three colours, watercolour mountains. I've got some green here as well. It's quite a dark green, so I don't need to be too concerned about 
how much colour actually goes in. Put that in like so. Over this side here in this corner, I'm just going to pop in some little vertical lines because this brush has got such a beautiful uh, point on it. Get the focus on the brush, like a super fine point. I can paint in what almost represents distant, a distant pine forest. Let's say, put some individuals as it spreads across that. So it like kind of completes the foreground, creating the depth. The depth that the grey has given us is important. It really is. It's important. So the, it all comes together. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. I'm working quite free this. If you're thinking, slow down, Mr. Palmer. Well, like I said, this is very much what we're doing today is very much a demo. Don't get these mixed up with workshops. Workshops are steady, give you time to work, and you can check out all the previous ones, all the ones I showed you. You can have, check them out online as well. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a bit of water now, just water. I'll put some water over here. Derbyshire water this, straight from the tap. Bring it in. It's warm today. It's like parry shoving in here. There it is, bring it in. So if you're watching this later and you think, well, the 13th of June 2021 has passed, just have a look on the website. Watercolor TV has got the list of the latest one that you want. So we've got that, we've got depth, we've got mist, loving that already. Let's put a bit of texture. How are we going to do texture? I'm going to use a Costa Coffee card. I want to scrape it off on the page. So I'm going to use this edge of the card and we're going to come down from the sky. So the card's dry. Like so. Take it up. So you can see, let's get a bit closer in folks, you know, so you can see what we're doing here. Make sure you wipe off the color before you do the next one. But if you start outside of the, the picture, because the sky is dry, you can see how I'm putting that little, I love that, that little bit of extra pressure. You can smell the pressure. It's probably a good job you can't smell this room because it's been, I've been sat in this hot studio all day. You can use your imagination if you like. There we go. So that's given character. You can gently scrape over any little bits and bobs of light and shape and any bits of texture, but really creates a lovely effect. And hopefully we've captured something at that stage that's got lightness, it's got mountains. Hello to Pac-Man in the background. It's got shape, it's got form, it's got texture. Love it. So far so good folks. Again, that's going to dry off for a few moments and while it is drying off, what I want to do is take away the masking tape. There's a good chance of seepage on a warm day. Can you see it's crept down the back of the tape? Nice and steady, nice and steady. Take your time. Can't beat a bit of bully. Just bring it down very closely. There you go. Seepage. Seepage is okay. We don't mind a bit of seepage. In fact, what I want to do here is use that grey to actually repair any bits of seepage that may have happened. It does happen. It happens to the best of us. Old age and poverty. That's what that is. Bring it in. We've got the green as well, so it all kind of fits in. And we can actually start to turn this into reflection as well. Turn it into reflective effects. Yes, we've got a bit of a mountainous lake here. It's like watching paint dry this, isn't it? Just bring it across. Merge it into those. So it's just helping to hide any problem areas. We've got a bit of flow. We've got a bit of movement in the water, which is good.
very soft isn't it the colours on this one which is you know I didn't know that's how it was going to turn out until I did it that's the way of watercolour yeah a bit of water just to blend in any any areas now I do want to leave that to dry that's a definite I'm going to put some buildings on I think it would be quite nice on this one So as it stands, I mean, you've kind of got a picture, it looks okay, you've got a scene, if you was new to painting, if you did something like that, maybe you'd be quite happy. You've got depth, you've got a beautiful sky, a lovely light source here, you've got the colours, it, it's all there, even at this very early stage. But I want to do something a bit extra, I want to do some buildings over this side, and for this I'm going to use a small brush. And number six brush, beautiful pointy one here. Um, what colours am I going to use for this? Well, first of all, I'm going to use some of that orange. Diluted. So I want to make a pale colour. I'm going to drop a bit of red into it, actually, so you get more of an orange colour. So a slight sort of orangey colour. Then I want a stronger orange. So the orange and the red working together. Quite heavy, quite deep. Almost like a rich terracotta. So I've got a pale version of that original colour what we had. I've got this orangey rich terracotta. I've still got the grey. It's always good to have the grey hanging around. And then over here, I want to bring in some green. some green into play just gonna drop a bit of water in there if your paint's been in your palette for a while just drop water in let it soak in keep it simple keep it simple no sketching no sketching on this one that's right a little bit closer in then so we can see what we're doing there we are um, building is gonna go over this side here first of all we're gonna use the pale colour, the pale orangey colour. I will get a bit closer in for you here actually, I'm going to pop that just over there so you can see what we're doing. And we're going to go paint a bit of a building, just creeping into the side of the painting there. Now what I'll do here is I'll bring some grey into that as well. So I've used that pale orange tan colour. And then I've worked in a bit of grey, like an old rustic building at the side there. Just using water to blend that colour in. And then what we'll do is we'll come across here and we'll pop in another bit of the same colour. It's like a ghost building at this point. Just using water to blend the colour. Pick up the grey. I'm just going to add a little bit of grey underneath, under the eaves. So you can almost see a bit of a ghosty kind of building starting to appear. Okay, we'll give that a few seconds to dry. While it is drying, I want to paint in a base. I want to paint in a bit of a base. But just before I do the base, I want to add some reflections of the building. Little horizontal lines of that same colour in this corner. As though it's sat next to the water's edge. We'll give that a few seconds just to sort of just to sort of soak in and become part of the paper. Okay, very pale, very soft, very translucent. It'll grow on you, trust me. I'm an artist. It'll 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 happen. It'll happen, okay? It'll happen. We'll get there. We will. Eventually. 
it'll become a building. It's a bit wishy-washy at the minute. Okay, right, cool. So let's get down to the palette while it dries off. What we're going to do down here, we're going to get some rich colours. Again, we've got the grey. Always have the grey at hand. There it is. And we've got the orange, yes, thick orange. These are all the same colours. I'm just kind of picking and dabbing here. We've got the green. There's the green as well. So thick colours, similar to the ones I used for the um, mountains. Again, natural grey, natural orange, natural green. Check them all out online. And you can't go wrong. The size 6 brush you can also pick up online as well. Wonderful. What we're going to do with this, basically, we're going to paint in an area of foreground. Starting with that grey. into the orange. So quite strong in colour. Got the green there as well. Don't forget the green. Bring that in. That can actually sit nice and flush up against the edge of the building there. Down here. There we go. So basically just adding an area of rich colour. Where it sits. What I'll do then, again I'll use that card. A little plastic card again, close into this. I'm going to scrape off it's a £10 Costa Coffee card, which is exactly the same price that your virtual workshop costs. Check it out. Panda. Paint a panda in a bamboo forest. Get yourself booked in. The best £10 you'll ever spend. If you think, well, 10am UK time in my part of the world is early hours of the morning. There it is on cue. Does it matter? Because you can watch it back at any time. How many people in the chat are from the likes of America and Australia who actually watch these things? later at a different time this technique is one of those techniques that comes across easy but it's not it takes a bit of practice this if you can do this technique first time then well then i'm a little bit of a practice at it because it, it i'd say it just needs it we've surrounded that little building basically with um some color Some richness, love it. These little bits here will just become part of the picture. It'll all come out in wash. Trust me, I'm an artist. Let's let's put the roof on. Let's put the roof on the building, shall we? We've got that rich orange. If you remember, we mixed it earlier. Not we've not used it yet. Still hanging around in the palette. This one here, it's red and orange together. So like a rich terracotta Mediterranean style colour. I'm gonna bring that in quite freely. Down there. Like a little bit of a rustic building by the sea. Super. And then, because I've got this really pointy brush, I can actually use it for adding some detail. Can I do a big shout out to Lynn, Lynn Howe, who was just donated in Super Chat, £4.99. You're a star, Lynn. Thank you for your support. Everybody that's donated in Super Chat, thank you so much. Every little helps. I think um, people that actually work on YouTube, you know, it's 
it's quite a hard there's lots of competition out there I've been lucky that I've been on YouTube since 2009 so quite a while quite an early adopter I was to YouTube so doing videos and various things so and last year 2020 during the pandemic the the peak of the pandemic YouTube was a godsend to a lot of people I'm sure I'm sure it really was so I'm starting to be a bit more crisp with my colors here I'm starting to get more in the way of outlines I'm going to darken the edge of the roof here as well get some shadows into it this is just that gray natural gray this is the color I'm using beautiful this paper is so nice to work on it really is it's a pleasure to work on um, what paper is it it's it's actually yes you know it's Matthew Palmer paper but um, it is a a paper that I had a hand in designing um, quite a few years ago now about 10 years ago actually it's cotton which means it stays wetter longer which is good is it mere is it moist put some little bits of detail on pick up the orange So that nice kind of Mediterranean style building, I guess we could say there. We've got the green hanging around here, so we're going to actually change brushes for this particular stage. Here I've got one of Matthew Palmer's tree and texture brushes. These are lovely tools. The smallest one is great for this. A nice rich green. Here are the two natural greens, natural green light and natural green. Stippling is the key for this. Plastic card would come in handy as well. Let's go back to the picture. Making trees easy to work on. What we're going to do here is pop that on and we're going to stipple. Some trees. Beautiful. I have to tilt it forward because the spot lamps on the wet paint kind of hit, hit hit the colour. Let's pop that also on the edge just here. Bear with me. Beautiful tool for, for stippling. This video is not sponsored by Costa Coffee. It's just the first card I grabbed. Let's put some bushes with a Matthew Palmer bush brush. What? The marketing speaks for itself. There we go. Love it. Happy with that. What I want to do now is also get some real dark green coming out of the brush. Very strong green at this point. Same tool, same tool. I want to get some of those nice classic tall trees that you see. So actually what I want to do is I'm going to take some grey, those nice tall trees that you see, we're going to bring it right down on the edge around the roof, the roof, I'm just kind of creating this as I go along, yeah we can tell, bring it in and then we'll go. We'll go quite tall. Let's come back with the camera here. Tilt it forward. There you go. That's the dark green. That's natural green, that colour's called. Obviously, you can mix your own greens from blues and um, yellows. You shouldn't really be using ready-made off-the-shelf greens. They don't look right. The light green is here as well. Natural green. This is the natural green light. Beautiful, vibrant, natural spring kind of colour. Perfect for this time of year. The foliage is coming out in force at the minute. Look at that. You can almost make it look as though it's catching the sun. Tree and texture brush, this being the smallest one. And you can get that rich. It's it's a slightly it's semi-transparent, semi this colour. 
so it's quite rich it's quite a rich color just picked up a number six brush to put a little bit of extra detail on but they're lovely those trees i do like to see them trees in a picture like poplar trees do you call them cypress trees you tell me i don't know just a tall sort of tree by the sea by the lake nice to see that beautiful tall tree taking a bit of shape let's let's zoom back let's zoom back look at the whole picture get it nice and steady that's how we're looking so far if you've just joined us eh? so from mountains from hills and mountains into buildings at this point loving that tree i'm gonna pop another one at the back bugger the expense we can do this did he say bugger yes he did so let's bring it in cut that bit out in editing get the gray back to the darker green bugger bring it in let's pop a line down here and then again the nice light green but to the side So we've got another one of those tall trees coming in. Look at the grey, look at the shadows that we've added to those areas. Again, if you like my style of painting, do check out the virtual workshops. Again, there's one on this Sunday. It's pretty much one every week, hit and miss. Um, much more steady, broken down, into detail, not working at this pace by any means. Very, very steady painting process. And if you book into the one on this Sunday, the 13th, there it is at the bottom of the screen, you could win this painting. This painting will be given away during the workshop. So there you go. Prizes galore. An original. What more could you want? Loving those, loving those trees. Let's tilt it forward. The shadow sitting in there makes quite a quite a difference. I want to reflect that area. I want to reflect it. Um, I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to bring the camera a little bit over so it appears straight because, again, we are live, no editing, I keep saying that, but it's true. So sometimes you have, you have to bear with me a little bit. I've got another plastic card here. I'm going to pop this card into the water parallel you can see it's not straight look the, the board parallel with the edge of the building the cottage whatever we decide that building is we'll take some of that dark color and we'll do some nice reflections this is kind of the dark green i'm using here this is a size six round brush The lighter green to reflect the tree and then introducing some of the gray right into that corner and also along the edge to aid reflection let's take a look at that can you see what that's done? It's brought out the shape in the water. Yes, the paints are all artist quality. Um, what does that mean? Artist quality means it's made from natural pigments where possible. When we say where possible, it's not always easy in this modern world to get natural pigments, but made with gum arabic as well. Gum arabic means you're getting the finest quality. Um, it's like an adhesive, it holds the paint to the paper, does gum arabic. And it's an essential part of watercolour. Let's pop that in there. Like so. Can you see how that's reflected that building? Look at that. Beautiful. We've cracked it there. I've earned my money. I've earned my super chat. Well done if you donated to the super chat. Thank you. Check it out, let's pop some little bits of darkness along those edges. Touch darker. 
and even just that little bit of subtle with a silent B, a little bit of reflection of that little um, doorway. Probably just creep a hint of the windows there, but that's really effective. I like to see that. It's good in it, that. I'm happy with that. If we spike the brush, splay the bristle, look at that, we can add some depth to the water in the form of dry brush. Now, if you can't really see what's happening here, then that's because it's very subtle. It's downward brush strokes, downward brush strokes to give depth. That's what we're doing here. Downward strokes. We're going to come back to the mountains here. We're going to go in with some darkness, waving across. We've got those dark greens because what I think would really work nice here would be some nice tall dark tall trees and I I'm literally just using this brush for doing these can you see how it just kind of almost makes like an island I guess you could say yeah in the middle there I've got that lighter green if I need to pop some some extra highlights in you can actually use it quite thick natural green light it's you can overpaint it which means it's almost like acrylic in consistency so that's quite effective it's interesting doing demos because you tend to work a lot freer than when you're doing your own painting you're working quick and speedy there we go so that nice little bit there again I would reflect that area I would reflect it I'd bring some green in just to say there's a bit just a hint of reflection creeping in nothing too major just a little bit Little wafts of green. A little bit over here as well, actually. In the mist. Gorillas in the mist. Beautiful film. Is that Sigourney Weaver? I think it is. I'm going to do some little bits in the background as well. Little bits of. Let's get a bit closer in for you. We're still quite close in here. So I've just picked up some of this colour, which is called Matthew Palmer's Whatever's on Your Brush Colour. And bring some of that in little bits of little bits of background trees and we can actually attach these into the mountains so imagine there's a distant forest running up the side of the volcanic rocks there I love that effect that the card created at the beginning Bring that into play. What I do reflection there, I just do a couple of horizontal lines, I think. Less is more for that. Just little hints of it. Tiny bits of ripple. Horizontal wafts of your brush. We've got a nice detailed area there, folks, coming through. Can we see? It's made a lovely foreground effect. What do you think? From that, that beautiful, soft, gorgeous sky, the soft clouds, into rich, bold colours here, and again, all done with those natural colours. 
what I want to do is give that a few seconds to dry because I want to put some light in the water to kind of finish off. How would I put light in the water? Well, you could use a light colour, of course, or if you've got something nice and sharp hanging around, something like this bad boy, a craft knife, a crafty knife, a scalpel. Literally, you can use the point of it to create light. And if you look at a painting like this, there's a full lesson on this on watercolour TV. Lots of this here, these splashes that you can see, and over here have been done with a craft knife. So what I would want to do here is get nice and close in, especially in some of those dark areas. Let's start over here actually. And I would want to go in with a knife and I'd want to scrape off, physically cut the paper. You're joking! You've ruined it. Bring it in. You can't do that. Ruined it. Look at that beautiful little bit of subtle sort of sparkly stuff down here as well in the lake. Horizontals. Nice horizontal lines to create light and sparkle. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Look at that lovely building there. Zooming back, distant trees. Gorgeous sky, that bit of light in the water. And you know what also really finishes these pictures off? And you can't beat a good mount. It's quite satisfying. Filth, pop that on. Frame the picture, beautiful. Loving the reflection there, loving the trees. Loving the simplicity of that picture. No sketching, just a pleasing watercolour scene. And I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please support me by booking in to one of the live watercolour workshops. You can see the date of the next one at the bottom of the screen. There it is, the 13th of June. £10, paint a stunning panda with bamboo forest in watercolours. £10. You can do it from all over the world, live or at any time after information, of course, is on the website. Also, the link is in the description. Thank you for taking time out for that pretty quick demo, folks. Thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a nice close-up for us. Love the softness, love the translucency, love the clean, crisp colours that made that beautiful atmospheric watercolour. Thank you again. Thanks for support. Thanks to everyone that donated in the super chat and I will see you for the next uh, workshop, of course, that will be coming up on Sunday. But if you're watching this later, just head over to this website here um, or there's a link in the description for all of the up and coming workshops. Make sure you check out Facebook, Matthew Palmer's Watercolour Group and please do subscribe and hit like before you go. That makes a big difference. So thank you. Leave us a comment. And I will see you soon for more watercolour painting. Take care and keep the paint flowing. Bye for now.